Welcome back to Epic Updates. It's Jonas and Ashley here with the Epic Phoenix Real Estate Group. And uh, today we got another suggestion from one of Jonas's past clients. So uh, she was asking about being a first time home buyer. And the question isn't necessarily posed for herself. As I said, she was a previous client, but she wants to talk about what it looks like for her son or maybe some of the younger generations. So Jonas, tell us a little bit about what it means first to be a first time home, home buyer in this market. Yeah. Well, in this market uh, or in any market, you know, obviously it could be nerve wracking scenario. Um, most people consider this the biggest purchase of their life. Mm -hmm. So obviously, you know, something to take very seriously. Um, I would, maybe say the most important purchase of your life. So, um, yeah, with that, you know, generally first time home buyers, you know, are not flushed with cash. That's all, generally our biggest, you know, stumbling block or, you know, would uh, maybe take a little bit more time to kind of to get there. Um, but there's lots of options out there. So more times than not, um, we see them utilizing loan programs like FHA, um, in some cases VA, if they're a veteran, uh, which are lower down payment requirements uh, for properties. Um, great programs, um, you know, 100% financing or three and a half percent down. Um, other times they may get a co-signer, parent, friend, family member, what have you. Um, that's always an option. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest thing is they just don't know where to begin. They don't know what their credit looks like. They don't know what the budget looks like. They don't know what the payment scenario is. So usually is what we'll do is we start with a needs assessment, just like we do with any client and kind of figure out, you know, um, are they in a lease? Are they living at home with mom and dad? Are they getting out of school? Um, you know, if they are getting out of school, a lot of times the time in school, depending on what their uh, degree is, could actually count towards a seasoning requirement as far as what a lender is going to look at as far as if they're entering a certain field, right? So if they're going to school for nursing and end up getting an offer letter at a hospital, they can actually utilize some of the time in school so they don't necessarily have to have been employed for maybe as long as a, yeah. a lender would want to see, mm -hmm. you know, given another situation. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, when um, we're doing that, we're obviously talking about that. Uh, you know, if they are in a lease, we try to time it as best they can because oftentimes they're going to have lease break fees, which we obviously want to try to avoid. So, yeah. kind of open communication with you know their landlord or depending on what their living situation is, if they're that's something they're able to, to get out of. Uh, and then we immediately get them in contact with one of our lender partners. Yeah, I was going to say uh, being able to talk to a mortgage professional and critical. You know, it, it really it is it is key. I mean. Yes, you have to have pretty good credit in order to buy something, but you know, a lot of first time home buyers like what if they yeah. have no credit? Right. And it's like yeah. you you can't have no credit and buy a property. So in yeah. conjunction with working with like Jonas or myself, we really wanna pull in a yep. mortgage professional so you know you're doing everything you need to do in order to get prepared for when that yep. time comes because it might take a little bit of time yep. to get yourself into a purchase position based on credit credit or they may even save a little bit more money yeah um you know another option we could look at they've got some really good uh, what we call dpa programs mm -hmm. down payment assistance programs sometimes those are grants that are completely forgivable um other time they're you know second loans uh but long story short it gets them in a property and then, you know, oftentimes with the rents skyrocketing out here, we kind of do an analysis as far as, you know, does this make financial sense for them? You know what I mean? Is this, you know, not going to break the bank for them to kind of move into a purchase situation? Um, so that's obviously important. And then obviously, you know, what's their goals? Is this going to be something that's eventually going to be an investment property? So maybe we're looking at something simple, like a little condo, you know, townhome, something like that. Or is this going to be more of a longer term you know, property that they maybe want to eventually, you know, grow into and, and have a family and that sort of thing. So just kind of figuring out those things. Um, you know, I remember when I bought my first property way back at the ripe age of 23 and yeah. was rubbing nickels and dimes together, you know, to, to, to do that. Um, you know, I did an 80-20 loan when they still had those, which means I had a second loan at a higher interest rate uh, at 20% and then 80%. And then obviously, you know, we went in and, and bumped the price. Um, a little bit to offset closing costs. So I was fortunate enough to come in with no money down, which, you know, at that time was huge. And, uh, but it, it afforded me the opportunity to, to gain equity. You know, my first tax year filing my taxes, I actually got money back, which never happened. And, you know, this is in California, the, the value skyrocketed, which yeah. gave us the equity to come out here and move to Arizona and put our 20% down payment on our dream home at the time. So um, I always say, you got to start somewhere. It doesn't necessarily have to be your forever home or your dream home, but the most important thing is just getting in the game getting and your foot buying the door something and doing yeah. something. Exactly. Yeah. So, I agree. 
Um, that's it. I mean, in a nutshell, there's, you know, some more moving parts with that. But, you know, the big thing is don't be locked up by fear and really seek out a real estate professional, whether it's us or a lender or somebody, family member that, that does this, because there's a lot of bad information out there. You know, people think they need like 20% down. I think they need like a 700 plus FICO score. You know, um, you know, there's all these misconceptions that aren't true. So um, it's important they talk to somebody and understand what their needs are. And yeah. those people are us. Yeah. And really what it boils down to is whatever your fears are, you can find something that'll, you know, verify as to why. Like, yeah. I don't have 20 percent down. I don't have a 750 yeah. credit score. It's it really is. You know, a lot of people really it boils down to just them being nervous. So if you have questions about what it takes to be a first time home buyer or if you have like a son or a daughter or a colleague or what have you um, that has questions about what they need to do in order to position themselves into purchase down the road, yep. have them get in touch with us. Please. And um, per usual, if you um, have any topics of interest, um, feel free to reply to this um, you know, video or email, get in touch with Jonas or myself because we'd love to highlight your question. But uh, that's it from us today. Again, thank you for watching our epic updates and we will talk to you soon. Take care.